helping hand, the helping hand, do you need a helping hand? If the job's too big, if you're in a jam, you'll need a helping hand. A helping hand, a helping hand, do you need a helping hand? If the job's too big, if you're in a jam, you'll need a helping hand. One day a red tomato got a great big job to do. He asked his friend the cucumber to help him see it through. Now cucumbers are silly and sometimes get confused. What did he say? Did it go okay? We'll leave, leave that up to you. Hey Larry, can you help us? This here's my neighbor Joe. His mom is at the doctor. She broke her big left toe. She asked if I could help her finish up a couple chores. But I can't do them all myself. I need Joe's help and yours. A helping hand, a helping hand. Bob needs a helping hand. The job's too big. He's in a jam. Bob needs a helping hand. A helping hand, a helping hand. He needs a helping hand. The job's too big. He's in a jam. He needs a helping hand. Bob. I love to be a helper. This suit helps me fight crime. I couldn't be more willing. I do it all the time. And I can be a psychic pal. I'm mighty teeny Joe. Though crimps don't stand a chance against my teeny mighty blow. A helping hand, a helping hand. Bob needs a helping hand. Help me help me help. But we got a hunch that's a bit too much. He just needs a helping hand. A helping hand, a helping hand, he needs a helping hand. He likes your zeal, but it's no big deal. He just needs a helping hand. Um, I had something else in mind. See, I can rake the leaves while Larry cleans the shed. And Joe can fold the laundry, feed the dog, and make his bed. Then I will vacuum all the rugs while Joe is busy dusting. And Larry, you can mop the floor before it gets disgusting. I wonder what the cucumber's gonna do. Um, I was thinking that I could use my chopsticks to eat yogurt by the plateful. We'll teach the spoonless people, they'll be forever grateful. And mighty teeny Joe loves helping any way he can. He'll help the forkless people eat gazpacho from a pan. That's pretty much what we figured. Well, that's nice, Larry, but don't you see? That you can be a helper by sweeping up the floors. You don't need superpowers to oil squeaky doors. Be a super helper, pile papers in a stack. There's lots of stuff that we can do before Joe's mom gets back. Whoa! A helping hand, a helping hand, Bob needs a helping hand. He's been a little dim. Maybe it's sinking in. Will Larry lend a helping hand? You know, Bob, you're right. I fear my mind was focused on some bigger, grander things. Like using super suction ears or super teeny wings. But now I know the love we show is equally as grand. To be got superhero, simply lend a helping hand. Yay, he got it. A helping hand, a helping hand, will you lend a helping hand? When the job's too big and someone's in a jam, always lend a helping hand. Always lend, lend a helping hand. But how tomatoes break their toes, I'll never understand. Well, uh, that was interesting. Okay, Archibald? Oh, just fine, thank you! <laughs> Ahem. You'll be glad to know, folks, that we have saved the best for last. It has long been rumored that Gilbert and Sullivan, the brilliant musical duo, penned one last musical before their deaths. This musical, legend has it, was lost before it could be staged. Well, if my cohorts, Philippe and Jean-Claude, are correct, we have that lost musical! The fellows? Ah! Oh, oh! We have it right here! Right here! The lost musical of this Gilbert and Sullivan! Eh oui! Oh, splendid! <laughs> Let me have a look at it. Oh, here it is! Gilbert and Sullivan present Lyle the Kindly Viking, a musical pop-up book.
Well, get ready for a truly historic event. Once upon a time, there was a little village by the sea where there dwelt a band of Vikings. Good morning, Mabel. How are you, dear? Oh, just fine and dandy. Is Harold round here? I haven't seen him, but that's no surprise. Olaf's gone too? Mm-hmm. They're out with the guys. We should have listened to our mothers and married more judiciously. But we pick men with metal hats who sail across the sea. Live and learn. We marry Vikings. What are you know? The terrors of the sea. They're Vikings. Wherever they go, pillaging happily. They're Vikings. Let there be no ambiguities. Cause this is my life as a Viking wife. We have to admit that it's rife with strife. But that's the lot we got when married we. The terrors of the sea. Oh, look what the cat drug in. Wonder what they brought back this time. Hey, uh, there's your wife, Olaf. Mm, yep, and there's your wife, Harold. Oh, boy, do they love us or what? Well, what's not to love? I mean, after all, we're Vikings. What do you know? The terrors of the sea. We're Vikings. Wherever we go, pillaging happily. We're Vikings. Let there be no ambiguity. Vikings, cause who doesn't like a pile of loot? Some gold and jewels and a shiny suit. And a giant screen TV to boot. A Viking life for me, yo -ho. We're Vikings. So that was the life of a Viking. Pillaging and plundering. Uh, those are fancy words for, well, for taking other people's things. They were stealing. Uh, their boats were so fast that no one could catch them, so they could get away with it. But not all the Vikings were involved in this unfortunate practice. Uh, no, uh, there was one in particular. His name was Lyle. Good morning, Lyle. Good morning. You missed another raid, Lyle. I know. I was making stuff. Lyle never went on the raids. Instead, he'd stay home and make crafts. Uh, uh pot holders, to be exact. What you got in the bag, Lyle? Pot holders. You want one? Oh, you gave me one last week, but thank you. Here's your share of the loot, Lyle. Uh, don't worry, it's the least we could give you. Thanks. Now, Lyle was definitely an unusual Viking. Whenever the other Vikings returned from a raid, he would take his small bag of loot, plus a bunch of potholders, and head out to sea on his own expedition. Hi, Sven. Hi, Otar. As you can imagine, this puzzled the other Vikings quite a bit. What's up? With Lyle. What's up with Lyle? I'm telling you that boy doesn't fit the Viking style. Since 793, our strategy's been clear. Go get stuff from over there and bring it over. He's got me feeling all contempty. He takes his boat out loaded up and brings it back in empty. What? What? What is up with life? Yes, 
Uh, well, uh, no one could figure out what Lyle was up to. So two of the other Vikings, uh, two fellows named Sven and Otar, decided to follow him and find out. You guys go ahead. We'll catch up. Uh, Sven, you don't have to sing. But it's a musical. Uh, yeah, I know, but you don't have to sing every line in a musical. Uh, talking is okay, too. Oh, okay. So very stealthily, they followed Lyle across the sea. No, you're too close. He's gonna see us. No, 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 Sven, no. Sven, I'm not close enough. Would you just let me? We're gonna lose them. I'm just trying to track. Closer. I'm... No, no, too close. I no, do... no. Would you just? And much to their surprise, he led them right back to the monastery they had raided the night before. What? Huh? What is he doing? Ah, uh, but can I see? Uh, but Sven, no, hold on, hold would on. You, just I, a minute. Wait, I wanna. No, come would on. you? Would you just? No, let I, go. I got Give me the. I got him. You just got. Um, those were Olaf's. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I say? My friends have taken your things away. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I do? I've come to bring some back to you. I cannot make it all come back, for they are bigger and all. But I'll share what I have in my little sack And a few of my own pot holders Hey, it's the thought that counts Dear little Viking boy You can call me Lyle Oh, okay <clears throat> Dear Lyle, dear Lyle, we like your style for we were all despairing But you rowed your boat for many a mile To practice an act of sharing Boys? Thank you, thank you, Viking friend No longer are we blue Rest assured that Sven and Otar were very confused. I'm confused. They returned home and waited to confront Lyle. Not so fast. Don't take another hop. We know where you've been, and we think it's gotta stop. Huh? We Vikings rule the seas. We pillage and attack. We never say please, and we never give stuff back. Not to mention the potholders. You both care about your share of gold, so rare, and big TVs. But when I share, I get my share of friends. Do -do 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 What's the use? A golden goose is no excuse for being mean. When I share, I get my share of friends. Do -do 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 Yeah. Well, Sven and Otar had never thought about it that way. Could sharing actually give them more of what would make them really happy? Even they had noticed that watching that big screen TV wasn't all that fun by yourself. They needed to give that a little more thought. In the meantime, though, they knew Lyle would be in big trouble if Olaf learned what he was doing. If Olaf finds out, you'll be in big trouble. Uh, you can just talk. Oh, right. <clears throat> if Olaf finds out, you know. Well, Olaf's not gonna find out. This will be our little secret. Thanks, guys. 
so they resolved not to let Olaf find out. Unfortunately, this was easier said than done. Just a few days later, as the Vikings were headed out to raid the monastery once again, it was the only monastery in the area, Otar spotted something. Oh, no. What is it? It's Lyle. He's at the monastery. <gasps> if Olaf sees him, he's in big trouble. What do we do? We've got to distract Olaf. Look, Olaf, there's a fish with a pretty yellow circle at the bottom of the backside of his fin. Look, Olaf, there's another and another and another. And that little one has got a funny grin. Well, I don't see Look, it. Olaf, 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 way down underneath the water. It's the biggest fish I think I've ever seen. Look, Olaf, he's got purple spots and orange and yellow markings and a dorsal fin that's iridescent green. What? Otar, I don't see any of that. Sven, we've got to distract him. Help me out. Oh. Look, Olaf, there's a turtle and he's wearing pink pajamas and he's got a cowboy hat upon his lid. Look, Olaf, very close and see he's riding on a llama and he's chasing down the herd of giant squid. Look, Olaf, 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 There's a whale that's dancing with a bear. Look, Olaf, it's a mermaid. It's an ostrich. It's a bunny. Look, Olaf, please look anywhere, but... I don't see anything. What? But there. Hey, isn't that Lyle? Mm-hmm. And he left something with those monks. What is it? It's... Potholders and the little bag of loot we gave him. <gasps> hey, that goes against the code of the Viking. You can say that again. Why, that little Viking is in big trouble. What do you think you're doing? I was... Giving them stuff back. Um, yeah? Well, now there's a storm of brewing, and you're the one that's under. an example out of this ex-Viking! You know, I think Harold is right. We gotta get out of here! Almost done! You'll see that nothing good comes from giving things back! Somebody to save us, too. Thanks, guys. We knew we could help you someday. But what about my friends? Ah, uh, uh, they were mean to us. I'm pretty sure God wants us to help everyone, not just the people who are nice to us. Oh, you're right. We're monks. We should know that, huh? All right, come on, boys. Let's save the Vikings. Ah, uh, can we put away the good silverware first? Oh, all right. So not only did the monks save Lyle, they saved all the Vikings from the storm. And just because Lyle had made friends with them by sharing. Thank you, thank you, our new friends. You saved us from the Our share of gold, so rare, and big TVs. But when we share, we get our share of friends. So what's the 
their use. A golden goose is no excuse for being mean. When we share, we get a share of friends. Does that mean we can't be Vikings anymore? Not necessarily, but I do think you need to change your song. We're Vikings. What do you know? The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings. Wherever we go, sharing happily. We're Vikings. Let there be no animosity. Because our pillaging ways we will not mend by sharing and caring and making friends. And finally our singing is at its end. The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings. The sharers of the sea. I need to go to the bathroom. Ah, uh, Sven, you can stop singing now. Oh. Right. The sun always shone on the mountains of Fibble. The wind and the rains never came. To call the place beautiful, no one would quibble, though hard on the feet, they'd exclaim. But high in those hills, past the rocks and the rubble, so high that the clouds were below, sat two tiny towns that were nothing but trouble. As you listen, you'll see that it's so. Now the town to the west that thought it was best bore the name Flibberoloo, where the women and men since 1710 have worn on their heads one large shoe. Now in town number two, one big shoe wouldn't do. So the people of Gibberty Lot would look down and bellow at shoe-headed fellows and place on their own heads a pot. Mine's really more of a kettle. For days without end, these two neighbors would bicker as to whose headgear was best, and the shoes and the pots would fly ever thicker from morning to night without rest. <laughs> but not all of the people who lived in these cities were angry and bitter and vile. A few would write poems and sing happy ditties and greet all their friends with a smile. One Flibian fellow, who hated to fight, tried hard not to act like a mobster. While pots crashed around him from morning till night, he'd just play with his pet wind-up lobster. They kept to themselves, and they'd talk and they'd talk. Until one day he said, Hey, let's go for a walk. I'm tired of lying around like a squid. I want to go out there. So that's what he did. The shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend walked out of their town and began to descend to the dark, rocky valley between the two cities, away from his friends and their light-hearted ditties. Ba-la-la, ba-la-la. -la. Hey, this is swell, he said. Gosh, this is fun. It's great that my lobster can get out and run. But neither the toy nor the boy with the shoe could see the disaster about to ensue. For up in the rocks, hidden just out of sight, were six beady eyes filled with anger and spite. Six beady eyes watched our hero meander, two shifty crooks and their ruthless commander. What good fortune, the nasty one said. Here comes a poor fool with a shoe on his head. I bet he's got money. I bet he's got gold or maybe some jewelry he'd like us to hold. Whatever the booty, I think I could stand it. Why, that's what I live for. That's why I'm a bandit. And then they attacked him from under their rock. First they knocked off his shoe, <laughs> then they knocked off his sock. <laughs> but the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why, they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. Hey! He protested. I don't like your ilk. How will I go strong if I don't drink my milk? But they didn't care. They'd accomplished their goal. So they put our friend down, stuck his head in a hole, and walked off with his money, every last nickel. Then yelled back as they left. See you around, silly pickle! Um, I'm a cucumber. Then he said with a moan, Well, I guess I'm alone. But this was a loneliness he'd never known. His friends were far off and his lobster was missing. The sound he could hear was just the wind hissing. Hello? Hello? Things looked pretty grim for our Flibian buddy. His head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then, were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Flibberoloo. Of anyone, surely he'd help the poor soul. Hello, said the boy with his head in a hole. I seem to have fallen. I seem to be stuck. But now that you're here, well, I guess I'm in luck. Oh, dear, said the mayor, observing the shoe. A fellow in need, and he's flippy. 
Caribbean, too. <laughs> Young man, I have noticed your dire situation, and please rest assured that I share your frustration. But uh, how can I put this? Uh, what can I say? Ah, maybe you understand better this way. Is that music? I'm busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what I have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. Oh, I see. As soon as the mayor had finished his song, a Phlebian doctor came strolling along. Out of my way! She said, starting to slide. If you and your pickle would please step aside, I'm very important I can't stand and chat. Well, that's not my pickle. I found him like that. Besides, it so happens I'm noteworthy too. Why, I am the mayor of Flibberoloo. Um, um, I'm a cucumber. I see, said the doctor. Then you'll understand without an appointment I can't lend a hand. The folks with bronchitis, they're kids with a flu, she said to the mayor of Flibberoloo. If I'm not mistaken, you're quite busy too. Well, they talked about schedules, compared daily planners, till finally a voice said, Please pardon my manners. I don't mean to bug you. I see that you're busy, but being inverted has made me quite dizzy. The two other Flibians paused for a while. They looked at each other, then said with a smile, We're busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what we have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. Cause we're busy, busy, dreadfully busy. More than a bumblebee, more than an ant. Busy. Oh, it was just dreadful. How could they desert their Flibian friend with his head in the dirt? That's it, then. I'm finished. I'll die here down under. If they would not help me, then who would? He wondered. But wait, someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Oh, look, on his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Gibberty Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look! He exclaimed. He's from Flibberoloo. Why, they think we're garbage. They pelt us with shoes. Why should I care if he's beaten and bruised? But out here in the wild, his chances are slim. If I was in need, would I want help from him? He looked at our friend, and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. He may be Flibian, that's plain to see. But God made him special, just like he made me. So we got him unstuck, and he picked up his shoe. And together, they walked back to Flibberoloo, out of the valley and back into town, where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found. Oh, my! Said the doctor. He's wearing a pot. The little one there is from Jibber de Lot. <coughs> you saved this fellow? You pulled him through it? I don't understand. Tell me, why did you do it? He has a shoe and I have a pot But when we look deeper there's more that we've got God made us special and now I can see If you're special to him then you're special to me Maybe it's time to perform a good deed And when you finish you'll find that it's true When you make them feel better You'll feel better too Here, let me help you Thank you Oh, love your name So the boy with the pot gave the doctor some money to pay for the cucumber's bill. 
and the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny. I'm touched by his act of goodwill. If this little guy can take care of his brother, when he lives in one town and he in the other, why can't we all try to help one another? And love will surround our fair hill. <laughs> now if you visit the mountains of Fibble, you won't see a shoe or a pot. Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot. <laughs> And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Our curtain opens as Larry, having just finished his morning bath, is searching for his hairbrush. Having no success, Larry cries out, Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, 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 oh, what will this mean? What will become of him? What will become of his hairbrush? Laddie wonders. No hair for my hairbrush. No hair for my hairbrush. No hair, 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 back there, no hair. For my hairbrush. Having heard his wondering, Bob the Tomato enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in a towel, Bob regains his composure and confesses. Larry, that old hairbrush of yours. Well, you never use it. You don't really need it, so... Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. But I gave it to the peach, because he's got hair. Feeling a deep sense of loss, Larry stumbles back in the bench. Not fair. Oh, my hairbrush. Not fair. My poor hairbrush. Not fair, not fair, no hair, not fair, no wear, no hair, not fair, not fair, not fair. My little hairbrush. Having heard his lament, the beach enters the scene. Himself in a towel, both Larry and the beach are shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of each other. But recognizing Larry's generosity, the beach is thankful. Thanks for that hairbrush. Yes, good has been done here. The peach exits the scene. Laddie smiles, but still feeling an emotional attachment for the hairbrush, calls out, Take care of my hairbrush. Take care, oh my hairbrush. Take care, take care, don't dare not care. Take care, no share, no care. Take care, take care of my hairbrush. So is there anyone else you'd like to invite to your birthday party? Um, let's see. Don't forget Louie. Oh, and Marsha. I think that's it. Are you forgetting anyone else? No, I don't think so. Well, what about Fernando? I bet he'd like to come. No, not Fernando. Why not? Well, he just moved here, so I don't know him very well. And besides, he talks kind of funny. Now, Junior, he doesn't talk funny. He just talks different. His family is from another country. Yeah, I know. It still sounds funny. You know, Junior, God wants us to love everybody, not just the people that are like us. So we need to accept others just the way they are. Besides, we can learn a lot from people who are different than us. Yeah, I suppose. 
I'll tell you what. You think about it, and in the morning we'll talk some more. Okay? Okay. Good night, Junior. Good night, Dad. I'm a tomato, and I need your help. Whoa, deja vu. Um, what's he got on his space helmet? Huh? What do you mean? Larry! What? How many times have I told you not to eat while you're wearing your helmet? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> we need your help, Junior. <laughs> Starship, the USS Apple Pies, is in grave danger. Oh, really? Tell me more. In just eight minutes, the ship and its crew will be smashed to bits by a giant meteor. Good heavens. Well, can't you just move the ship out of the way? That's just it. The Apple Pies is completely without power. Dead in the water. She can't budge an inch. She's stuck. Oh, dear. Well, gee, how can I help? Didn't you minor in aerospace technology at the Happy Tots Preschool? Why, yes! Yes, I did! What'd you major in? That's not important now. Fado. <gasps> Me too. No time for chit-chat! Junior, only you can save the apple pies! Lieutenant Larry, the Shrinker Beam! Aye, aye, Captain Bob. <laughs> There it is, the USS Apple Pies. When we get on board, you'll be briefed by the ship's engineer, Scooter. Then you can get to work fixing the power. Okay. You've returned! Hello, Scooter. Any luck? I'm afraid not, Captain. The engines have got no power, and we've only five minutes till that meteor smashes us to bits. How many people are on the ship? 364! And how many escape pods are there? Two! Drat! How much do you know about this meteor? Oh, funny you should mention it. Our sensors have just determined that the meteor is made entirely out of... What? Out of what? Popcorn! <gasps> A popcorn ball meteor. The worst kind. Um, would that be caramel or cheese? Because I don't like that cheese stuff very much. It gets stuck to my tooth. It makes precious little difference when it hits it 5,000 miles an hour. Ah. Good point. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the fair. Hey, Don't who are those the guys? Lights are shining. Huh? Oh, never mind the them. They're we the will new dance guys. The hoochie -coochie. I will be your tootsie wootsie. Meet me in St. Louis. I'll be waiting there. Well, maybe they have some ideas. What? Not the Meet new guys. They don't know anything. All they do is sing and eat, eat and sing. Between you and me, I think they're crazy. We will dance the hoochie coochie. I will be your tootsie wootsie. Meet me in St. Louis. I'll be waiting there. Hi, I'm Junior. I'm Jimmy Gord. I'm Jerry Gord. We're the new guys. So, why do you sing all the time? Why don't you? Because it's weird. I mean, different. You know, sometimes differences can be good if we just take the time to get to know each other. Yeah, maybe. So, why do you eat so much? We're hungry, I guess. It's our metabolism or something. 
<laughs> you know, sometimes I think I could eat a whole bus. Yeah, well, sometimes I think I could eat a whole spaceship. Oh, yeah? Well, sometimes I think I could eat a whole planet. Planet, planet, planet. Mm -hmm. well, I could eat a rooster, a rooster, and a rooster. How many escape pods did you say there were? Two. Jeremy, did you mean what you said about eating a whole planet? Well, sure, but... How would you guys like to help save the ship? Well, gosh, let me swirl. Or something. Only two minutes left. I hope this works. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man? He lives on Drury Lane. I bet I could eat all his muffins. Oh, well, I bet I could eat all his muffins in his house. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, some kind of a planet or something. Hey! Maybe that's where the Muffin Man lives. Uh, no, Jerry, he lives on Drury Lane. Oh, yeah. Hey, what is this stuff? It's popcorn. Let's eat it! Do you think it's possible? If anyone can do it, they can. seconds left. I sure hope those gourds were hungry. Five, four, three, two, one. Incoming! No more for me, thanks. I'm full. Excuse me. Get him in here! Save the ship! Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You're telling me saving 364 lives by rapidly consuming 14,000 metric tons of popcorn is nothing? Well, I guess maybe it's a little something. And to think I wouldn't be your friend just because you guys are different. Why, if you weren't different, none of us would be here right now. Hey guys, look at this. Well, I got a little bit hungry, so I was just snacking on the end table when, when I saw this. <gasps> it's some kind of electrical plug or something. Plug it in! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You guys are something else! You know, it kind of reminds me of a song. Hit it, boys. Have you ever seen a boy with funny clothes? A girl with braces on her teeth or freckles on her nose? Some kids call them oddballs. Some kids call them weird. Is it my imagination, or does Aunt Ruth have a beard? God makes lots of people in all colors, shapes, and sizes. He loves them very much, and what we need to realize is that calling people names because they're different is wrong. Instead, we need to look on them in love and sing this song. I can be your friend. I can be your friend. Some are skinny, some are stout. But the inside is the part that we're supposed to care about. Aye, that's where we got feelings that are very much the same. And so instead of weirdo, I think friend's a better name. I can be your friend. La, la, la. I can be your friend. La, la, la. If your hair is red or yellow, we can have lunch. I'll share my jello. I can be your friend.
What is it? Is something wrong? Oh, no. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to invite Fernando to my party after all. Really? That was quick. What made you change your mind? Well, you know, being different can be good. Like maybe if my party's about to be smashed by a giant popcorn bomb in there, Fernando could eat it. Or maybe if the slime monster shows up and tries to squirt slime all over us, Fernando could maybe blast him with his x-ray eyes. Well, I don't think Fernando could do those kinds of things. But I bet he could teach you about his country and show you the kinds of foods he likes to eat. Who knows? You might like it. Yeah, that sounds fun. I sure am proud of you for making the right decision. Well, it's time for sleeping. I love you, little mister. I love you, big mister. See you tomorrow. Okay. What? What is it now? Um, well, Lieutenant Larry here dropped our map right out of a spaceship. Sorry. And, uh, we were wondering if you could just give us directions to the freeway? I think we can make it from there. Out the window, down the street, and left at Mr. Slushy. Great. Thanks. That's what I said. I said left at Mr. Slushy. Oh, no. You said right. I distinctly remember you saying right at Mr. Slushy. Why would I say that? That'd be... that'd be crazy. I'm kind of thirsty. Can we stop at Mr. Slushy? No. We need that money for tolls. <laughs> Why, yes, it started from that tropic port aboard our tiny ship. Now, Larry, he was a mighty sailor man. And Bob, he was brave and sure. And, uh, weren't there five passengers who'd booked that day on our three-hour tour? Ah, uh, yes, our three-hour tour. Okay, let's see. There was the professor, and we were there. Well, yeah, and, uh, the millionaire. Um, and his wife. Mm-hmm. And wasn't there a movie star and, um, that other girl? Yeah, but they canceled. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, there we were on our three-hour tour, doing our best to entertain the passengers. Some veggies went to see, 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 to see what they could see, see, see. But all that they could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. Yes, well, that was just dandy. But isn't it time we left the dock? <laughs> okay, fire up the engine first, mate Larry. Aye, aye, Skipper. Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, yes. Why, just smell that salt air. Uh, mighty nice. I think I'll go back and see how our passengers are doing. Can you take over here? No problem, Skipper. It's a big responsibility. You won't daydream, will ya? Don't worry about a thing. I got you covered. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Oh, boy. This is the life. There's nothing I'd rather be than first mate Larry. Well, nothing that is. Except... Captain Larry Romanov, world famous Russian icebreaker pilot. Today, Captain Larry must free whales. Two great whales trapped in ice. But there is problem. A large iceberg stands between Captain Larry and whales. There may not be enough time to go around it, but surely even Captain Larry is not brave enough to smash through the iceberg! No one has ever done such a thing! Yes, this is no time for cowards! Captain Larry will smash the iceberg and free the bail! Ah! Commander Pablo has come to congratulate Captain Larry for his bravery. Hey Larry, we're making snow cones back there. Do you want peach or strawberry? Um, not now, Bob. First I have to smash through this iceberg and free some whales. There are no icebergs around here. Oh, yeah? Well, what do you call that? Ah! Oof! Uh -oh. 
Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, the brochure didn't say anything about layovers. Well, you see, Lovey, I, I believe we have had some sort of an accident. Uh, Skipper? Yes, we most certainly had an accident, and I think someone has some explaining to do. Well, um, you see, there were these whales, and they were stuck in the ice. And, well, the only way to get them out was to smash right through that iceberg over there. Except it turned out to be a rock. And rocks are a lot harder than icebergs. It just so happens that the nearest iceberg is 2,640 miles away. What were you thinking? You smashed our boat. Now what are we going to do? You have ruined our vacation. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, I'm sorry? At least the boat is still floating. Oh. Oh, I need to call my broker. I'm going to look for a phone. I That evening, we all worked together to build some huts to sleep in. But we were still pretty mad at Larry. Gee, it's kind of nice out here. Maybe this isn't so bad after all. Huh, Bob? Not so bad? What do you mean, not so bad? Our boat is at the bottom of the ocean, and we're stuck on this island, in the middle of nowhere, with no way to get home. I said I was sorry. At least you could forgive me. Well, it's just that we're... Well, can't you see we're... I just... I just... Can't. Oh. I said I was sorry. Well, that's just not good enough. Good night. Not good enough? Not good enough? He means... He means I'm not good enough. They all think I'm not good enough. I bet they'd be happier if I just left. So that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take my thing... and just go away. Yeah. I don't have anything. Well, I'll just go. Just with my hat. Goodbye, Bob. I hope you find a first mate that's good enough. I wonder where the skipper is. Who? Oh, you know, dear, the bright red round fellow. Oh, yes. Oh, where is he, anyway? I don't know. That's what I was wondering. Oh, has anyone seen Larry? Did you say something? Uh, no, it was that tree over there. Really? Well, what did it say? I believe it's looking for Larry. Uh, who's Larry? Oh, you remember? He's the chap who smashed the boat. Oh, and ruined our vacation. That's the one. Oh. Well, I hope that tree gets him. Serves him right. Here, here. Hello, people. Have you seen Larry? Oh, look, Lovey, it's the skipper. Oh, I didn't know tomatoes grew on trees. Well, actually... Oh, never mind. Hmm. A skipper, what are you doing up there? I'm looking for Larry. When I woke up this morning, he was gone. I've got it. Got what? Our ticket out of here. We can build a giant catapult to fling us back home. Here, I'll demonstrate with his working model. You wind it up. Then someone sits here, say, Bob, for example. Now, just pull this cord and... Our house! Ow. Oh, dear. Look what you've done to our house. You bunked me on the head with a coconut. Wow. I did not mean to do that. I am so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Well... I guess it was an accident, and you did say you were sorry, so I forgive you. Thanks. I'm really sorry about your house. I'd be glad to help you fix it if you want me to. Do you think you could forgive me? We know you didn't mean to do it, so, so we'll forgive you. Oh, thanks. 
Gee, it sure does feel good to be forgiven when you make mistakes. Yes, sir. Boy, if I said I was sorry for doing something wrong and, and really meant it, and people still wouldn't forgive me, I'd feel just terrible. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, Larry said he was sorry for smashing the boat. And that was just an accident, too. Just like when I hit you with that coconut, or when you fell through their roof. And we wouldn't forgive Larry at all. So that's why he went away. He must feel terrible. We've got to find him. Oh, come on, everybody. I, I think he's over here, maybe. Larry! Larry! Hey, little buddy! Larry! Larry! Everybody makes mistakes sometimes, and it was wrong for us not to forgive you when you said you were sorry. Yeah? Yeah! Can you forgive us for not forgiving you? Um, okay. I forgive you guys. Uh, phew. Oh, good. Hello? Did you say something? No, it was that tree again. I'm so happy to see you forgiving each other. It makes me want to sing. Do you mind? No! You know that in love we can forgive. It is the only way to live. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. Since God has forgiven us, it's true. You forgive me, I'll forgive you. I'm gonna start to show forgiveness from my heart. Oh, oh Summer! Right, yes. Only there was a way for us to get back home. Yeah. Well, at least we're all friends again. Hey, has anybody seen the professor? Nope. Voila! Do you like it? I made it entirely out of bamboo and coconuts. Pretty good, huh? Well, climb aboard. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Larry. Um, next summer, let's just sell lemonade, like everyone else. That sounds like a good idea. You know that in love we can forgive. Hey, man, it is the only way to live. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. Since God has forgiven us, it's true. You forgive me, I'll forgive you. I'm gonna start to show forgiveness from my heart. So do your part and show forgiveness from your heart. 